Welcome to Four Favorites, brought to you by the Quiet On Set podcast. I'm your host, Jürgen Graf, and today I'm joined by film critic Alan Muttley. Back again. Back again already after our Zurich coverage. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. Uh, now, um, on Four Favorites, we talk about our guests' favorite films to a specific theme, genre, or other topic. This month, in the spooky month of October, uh, we'll chat about uh, four favorite horror films. So, uh, welcome, Alan. Great to be here. Uh, as a film critic who's almost seen uh, 4,000 films and has locked them on Letterboxd uh, and reviews on your website going back for well over a decade. How well versed are you in the horror genre? Well, on pa uh, on paper, not that much. Like I've, uh, I'm missing quite a few key horror movies that I've uh, that you know people usually bring up when they talk about the best horror movies of all time. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I have also taught a class on horror movies or horror right. fiction and film okay. at some point. So I'm somewhere like between an expert and somebody who would like to be an expert. So somewhere along that road. Well, I think before we get into your top four, uh, I, I know this must have been a real challenge to, even though you, you don't consider yourself an expert by your own standards, I guess, uh, to narrow it down to just uh, four films. So, so what were some films that uh, didn't make it onto the list and uh, maybe some honorable mentions. It was a uh, it was a complete nightmare. So many great horror movies that I had to exclude. But yeah, as for the honorable mentions, these one didn't quite make the cut either because I've only seen them once or I haven't mm. been able to revisit them in a while. But they kind of stuck in my mind. So one of them is uh, the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, uh, the German silent film from the twenties, which. Uh, you know, I appreciate, I mean, I love it a lot. It's one of my favorite movies. I uh, love the horror aesthetic. Um, but if I'm, you know, looking at the, what do I, or the top four that I settled on these, you know, haunt me to diff to a certain extent that right. Caligari maybe doesn't. Caligari maybe more has the historical, historical interest, but I would like to still mention it as one of the great horror movies. Then another one is uh, that kind of goes in that direction is Todd Browning's Freaks from 1932, I believe, uh, mm. which is just, uh, even though it you know, might be considered a little bit problematic with its uh, depiction of disability, it is also a key work of disability on screen uh, especially in hollywood i really enjoy the uh, it is usually considered a horror movie but i really enjoy how it basically comes at this from a sort of an acute angle and uh, doesn't really play it for horror most of the time right then i also have the haunting the robert wise adaptation of shirley jackson's the haunting of hill house which is just a great gothic movie from the 60s mm -hmm. and david lynch's twin peaks Firewalk with me i've only seen that once but it that one really haunted me and i can't wait to revisit it so i think if we were to do this again next year it might just make the top four i was actually considering um watching your honorable mention as well i, I tried to watch uh, your picks at least and um with twin peaks i guess it's a bit more difficult because yeah i i haven't seen any of twin peaks it's it's been on my watch list for a while but i haven't gotten to it yet so a lot of uh historical stuff uh in outside of of your top four but i think uh it's not just all modern horror from now on in your top four and and maybe uh one of the the cool classics we can go over to your list uh first up on your list right is that cool classic uh, <laughs> Japanese film um, House, right? So how does that make it onto your list? It's just... I don't know, it's just like it blows me away every time I watch it. Maybe it's not like the most horrific horror movie you've ever seen, but yep. it's just... It's probably the most movie I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. It announces itself as a movie in the opening seconds and then it delivers on that promise for 85 straight minutes by just being... Both extremely crazy, extremely inventive in how it uh, plays with the haunted house trope. And mm -hmm. it really just this thing, it does this thing that I appreciate horror for, that it uh, uses the medium to show you things that you have not seen before and then twist those things a little bit to make them at least slightly 
I don't know, horrific is the wrong word, but like to put a put a bit of a horrific bend on it. And I just love that uh, it kind of operates on the sort of dream logic, always loved that in horror movies. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that one of the core script consultants was Nobuhiko Obayashi's nine-year-old daughter, yeah. uh, who gave him uh, pointers on how he could make it scarier uh, or crazier. And I just really love that about it. I had this on my watch list for such a long time and, and I did watch it last night uh, with my little brother and he, we just kept looking at each other and going like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? But we were so entertained. It really has that that value of playing with a lot of tropes that aren't really established yet in, in the horror world, but it already feels like it's playing on those. So for that, mm -hmm. it's, it's such a refreshing film even to see uh, 40, 50 years after uh, its release. Yeah, it's, Absolutely. It's, it's an old classic that uh, is streaming on the Criterion channel for, for anyone interested who wants to check it out as well. Then the other film, uh, next up on your list, I just finished right before we started this recording and I'm haunted. I'm haunted by it. I'm haunted by it. It, it is terrifying. It, it, it's, yes. It's, it's uh, one of the more modern ones. I think it is the most modern one on your list uh, from 2014, uh, David Robert Mitchell's uh, It Follows. I think I first saw that when it had like a two week cinema, uh, cinema run in Switzerland in 2015. Right. Uh, and it basically has never has not left my my mind since I've written numerous reviews and analyses of it I, I wrote a paper about it and like every time I watch it I'm like okay I've seen this movie like seven or eight times at this point surely it's not gonna scare me anymore and then it's just no, no still hits the spot yeah. Uh, yeah it's just again it's kind of like it it has that dream logic to a certain extent mm -hmm. that I, re I really seem to be looking for in horror movies but whereas in house this is also played for comedy here it's just pure well both existential but also very real just dread and uh, then it has also the the, the great Bernard Herman inspired uh, eight bit soundtrack mm. by Disaster Piece, which elevates a lot of the a lot of the horrific scenes just to a completely different level because it just it makes you so uneasy and it's ninety minutes of you being uneasy and in this case I really don't mind it because it just yeah it, it's terrifying I love it. <laughs> Yeah, after seeing it so many times, I, I can tell you after seeing it once, I don't think this is something that will let me go, especially, of course, we're not spoiling anything here, but it also doesn't let you go by the ending. It just feels like yeah. it, it has a grip on you and it doesn't let you go, which is yeah. the best thing you want out of a good horror film, right? I saw it in a midnight screening when I first saw it and then I came out of the cinema and I'm like, I was alone in that cinema and then I came out and I was like, well, damn, now I have to go home <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> don't look over your shoulder. Just, yeah. just never look back just keep on walking walk. yeah yeah anyways i think in the horror genre uh you get a lot of uh films i mean you just mentioned two films that that never got a sequel but uh for a lot of them a whole franchise is getting made out of a, a single horror hit your next movie on on your list is, is a sequel tell us about slumber party massacre 2 ah <laughs> uh, slumber Mar party massacre 2 i mean I have to uh, I have to preface this by saying Slumber Party Massacre One is also pretty good. Uh, it has a, a teenager eating pizza on a on a dead guy, so it's like that's already indelible image. A fun Saturday Slum night, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Slumber Party Massacre Two uh, again just elevates. Uh, the first one to a completely to a completely different level. So this one is not directed by the same person. Uh, Slumber Party Massacre Two is by uh, Deborah Brock, and uh, it's a very schlocky uh, Roger Corman produced uh, slasher movie, but also kind of a parody of slasher movies from the 1980s. It is the middle part of I think the first horror franchise that was uh, directed ex directed exclusively by women yeah i mean it's Ro it's roger corman it's very uh it's quite cheaply made but uh i just i love first of all just the way it is so confident in its own silliness mm -hmm. uh it has these gross out moments where you could just see like the, the joy to come up with these makeup effects just uh, emanates from the screen uh, if it's not just, you know, one, if there's not a giant zit uh, exploding into the face of the uh, into the face of the audience. And it has one of the all time great finales. Uh, I won't spoil anything here, but uh, you probably haven't seen a horror movie that ends 
on quite that uh on quite such a note it got me curious that was one that i couldn't find uh only the first one is streaming on on shutter and then on the criterion channel i think this one is also streaming on shutter but that's not yeah it's not available i guess for us in Switzerland, but if you are in the States, uh, I guess that's the place to go. I mean, Shudder really is the place to go for horror anyways. It looks like a good bit of a good bit of fun. Um, it's very fun. Yeah, watch it with watch it with uh, with people in attendance. You will have a great time. Have you seen the the recent remake they made of it? I have not, but I've I've been meaning to. It is on my list. Right. I've heard good things and bad things about it, so I am very curious. Well, same goes for uh, the next film, that I can ask you the same question again. Uh, David Argento's Italian classic from 1977, Suspiria. I have not seen the remake, but... Me neither. I mean, again, is on my list. It is on my list to such an extent that I own the DVD, so right. uh, I should I should get on that uh, yeah. to some extent. But yeah, uh, speaking of dream logic. I mean, coming to, coming to think, come to think of it, uh, Slumber Party Massacre Two also has a lot of dream logic to a point that mm -hmm. uh, you could probably make an argument that the whole movie is a dream. And I mean, Suspiria goes to basically basically the same place. Um, and yeah, probably one of the reasons I love it. It's uh, kind of nonsensical. The plot doesn't really doesn't really work, but it's uh, witch evil witches at a dance academy, and it's David Argento, so it's. Uh, caked in pastel candy colors and it's just yeah it's basically a jello wet dream i absolutely love it yeah i can kind of see from your list that uh pretty much all of them could be considered in some way or other i, I don't know no they, they, they're, just, they're not slashers i don't think they they would consider themselves as slashers although people are killed off pretty much one by one in this i, I felt like i'm seeing this but the dream aesthetic is probably a a, a better overarching theme uh for for your overall list yeah but then i mean you you mentioned slashers and then i'm thinking of other movies that i that i cut that I ended up cutting like Cuts. uh yeah. like alien is probably yeah. also like a warped slasher predator as well is like mm -hmm. a, there's a whole i i love halloween like if we go for straight up slashers so there's yeah. uh i think yeah i think there might be something to that uh to that formula that really speaks to me I mean, uh, Lachlan talked about Alien uh, when we did his, it made it onto his list. So it's not like it's not being mentioned on here. That's it. There's a bunch of uh, horror films that you can go check out in October. Alan, thank you so much for sharing your fi for, uh, favorites with us. So uh, where can people find uh, more from you? Uh, people can find my stuff on uh, facingthebittertruth.com. That's where I link all my writing, especially for Maximum Cinema and Swiss Info. And they can follow me on Twitter and Letterboxd, both at Alan Mutley. Sweet. All right. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and stay tuned for uh, more full favorites episodes uh, coming soon. And uh, don't forget to uh, let us know what your top four favorite horror films are in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.